The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salad better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. Have you ever been suddenly notified that you were about to be visited by some distant relative whose very existence you had all but forgotten? Well, that's what has happened to the great Gildersleeve. He's now listening to the repercussions from the little family. Now, Marjorie, your room is vacant, you know. But, Archie, I didn't even know such a person as Cousin Emily existed. Well, I wasn't so sure myself until I checked the family album. Her picture's there, all right. Not a bad-looking girl. You call that a girl? <laughs> yes, Leroy. What's confusing you is that midi blouse she's wearing. Cousin Emily must be in her middle 30s now. A little younger than I am. Who isn't? <laughs> Leroy. Is her husband coming with her, Uncle? I don't think so. She just said she'd be stopping over for a couple of days. Gosh, I wonder how a relative can smell a vacant room 2,000 miles away. <laughs> I bet she has a nose like a bloodhound. No, Leroy. We don't sort of get Marge and Bronco moved out so I can use their room. Leroy Forrester. Well? That'll do, Leroy. But gosh, aren't we were just beginning to have fun together? Just you and me, with nobody in the house telling us what to do. Why does a relative have to show up? Leroy. Darn roving relative. We haven't had any of the family visit us since Aunt Hattie was here two years ago. I'll never forget that visit. She couldn't wait to tell me how to raise the twins. Yeah, she had me washing my ears every 30 minutes. <laughs> Darn near took all the starch out of them. Now, now, she'll only be here two days. Well, she better not come over to our house and start telling me how to take care of the twins. Just because I'm young, some older mothers try to tell me how to do everything. Cousin Emily isn't even a mother. I don't think. Well, that's just it. We don't know anything about her. We're taking her sight unseen. <laughs> Children, you've got the wrong attitude toward Cousin Emily. You aren't being fair. You're unwilling to throw out the welcome mat. Hey, I got an idea. Let's throw out the welcome mat with a rope tied to it, and when she stands on it, yank it back. <laughs> <laughs> young man, that'll do. Cousin Emily's coming, and we're going to like it, whether we like it or not. Well, Bertie, are you getting the spare room, spick and span? Yes, sir. Oh, just making the bed, I see. Yes, sir. Bertie, easy on that pillow. I'm just pounding them nice and soft. Are you upset about something, Bertie? Not me. I'm not upset. Bertie's got nothing to be upset about. She's just making the bed. Brother, she flips that mattress like it was a hot cake. Bertie, I have a feeling something's bothering you. Not me. Nothing's bothering me. Bertie's got nothing to worry about. She's just making the bed. But you've turned the mattress over twice. Yes, sir, just trying to get it right. Some relatives are mighty particular about how a bed is made. Oh, so that's it. Uh, Bertie, I was just telling the children this morning, it's been two years since we've had a relative in the house. Yes, sir. Bertie remembers Aunt Hattie. Uh, yes. Fine woman. Mighty fine. Now, don't let the thought of Cousin Emily's visit bother you. No, sir, that don't bother Bertie. No reason for Bertie to be bothered. That's the spirit, Bertie. Well, I'm off to meet the train. 
No reason for Bertie to be bothered. I ain't expecting no relative. Bertie's fixing for somebody else's relative. Yeah, I know. And Bertie don't mind fixing if she can fix it right. But that ain't easy. Well, I don't imagine Cousin Emily will prove a problem. No, sir. All she has to do is tell me how to run the kitchen and run the house, and Bertie will do it. But it won't be easy. Well, I'll have to go now, Bertie. But don't forget, I'm still running the house. Okay. But it won't be easy. Oh, my goodness. Bertie's just like Marjorie and Leroy. I don't know why people resent a relative who shows up unexpectedly. Oh, you down here, Leroy? Hi. What are you doing sprawl on the parlor floor? I'm trying to get my model airplane motor to work. Look at this floor. Oil cans, tools, bolts, nuts scattered everywhere. Leroy, when I come back with Cousin Emily, I want this stuff picked up. And I want to find you sitting straight in a chair. Oh, fine. Here we go changing everything just because she's coming to town. Things around here won't be the same anymore. Leroy, why do you feel Cousin Emily won't fit in? All of us Gildersleeves fit in. There's not a square peg among us. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, tidy up the parlor. Okay, but remember, Uncle, you promised to take me to Craft Park tonight if I got the motor running. I did? Sure, so I can fly the plane under the lights. Well, Leroy, now that Cousin Emily's coming, that may not be possible. I knew it. This will be her first night here. I can't go off and leave her. I could. Young man. Well, you and Cousin Emily will be running off doing something every minute, and I'll be all left all to myself. Just a lonesome little kid. Leroy, let's not be jealous before she even comes to the house. Who's jealous? Well, wouldn't you like to go to the train with me and meet Cousin Emily? I can wait. Yeah, whatever you say. We'll be back soon, my boy. Okay. Hmm. Pretty ratty-looking welcome mat at that. Yeah, I better check it. No, nope. Leroy hasn't tied a rope to it. Gildy! Oh, hello, Judge. I was just on my way in. Well, I was just on my way out. Gildy, have you forgotten? This is our night to play Pinochle. Uh, sorry, Judge, but I have to go to the train to meet Cousin Emily. Cousin Emily? I didn't know you had a Cousin Emily. I'd almost forgotten myself until she reminded me with a letter. Well... What am I supposed to do tonight, twiddle my thumbs? Now, Judge, I know I've left you at loose ends, but... Say, why don't you drop back tonight and meet Emily? Me? You can do me a favor at the same time. Oh? Uh, Leroy wants me to take him to the park tonight to fly his model airplane. While we slip away for an hour, you can entertain Emily. Gilda, don't try to pawn your relatives off on me. <laughs> it isn't that, Judge. With Emily coming, Leroy's nose is a lot of joint. You know how the boy is. Wants to be with me every minute. Well, I'll do it for Leroy. What's this cousin Emily like? Well, I've never seen her. But here's a picture that I'm taking along to identify her at the train. Let me see that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, don't laugh at my relatives. That picture was taken years ago. What's she wearing, a life preserver? <laughs> <laughs> That's a midi blouse and you know it. Unless they came in after your time, you old goat. Well, she does look lively and interesting. Why is she coming to visit you? Well, she said she just closed in summer stock. Oh? Yeah, as a little girl, she was always interested in dramatics. So was I. That's a little boy, of course. I put on a wig and played Little Eva in Uncle Tom's cabin. You want to hear me recite? No, thanks, Little Eva. Save your recitation for Cousin Emily. <laughs> George, it's great to watch the trains. I hope the family likes Emily. I've sort of gone out on a limb for her. Say, I wonder if that's Emily. She said she'd be wearing a little white hat. Hello, cousin. I'm over here. Rockport. Oop. Emily, there you are. Rockport, it's you. It's you. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Goodbye, right, George. Good to see you after all these years. I'd never recognize you from your photographs. You're so big. Well, <laughs> put on a little weight, I guess. <laughs> By the way, where's Fred? Fred? Fred who? Your husband. That's his name, isn't it? Oh, Fred. 
I'd almost forgotten about him. Throckmorton, you should have seen the wedding present. Sterling silver, beautiful china, a vacuum cleaner. Well, fine. How is Fred? Oh, Fred and I never got married. <laughs> you didn't? Well, you know how it is, Throckmorton. When a woman passes 30, everybody in the family thinks she should be married. So I had some wedding announcements printed and sent them out. But what about all the wedding presents? Oh, I use them every day. <laughs> oh. Well, take my arm, Emily, and I'll see about your baggage. All right. So nice to have a man to see about things. You have no idea how hard it is for a girl alone, Throckmorton. Especially for an attractive girl. Oh, yes. Why, on the train coming down from Milwaukee, there were these two fellows sitting across from me. Both real cute. Well, we hadn't been on the train more than five minutes before George, the blonde one, leaned over and said, Hi, baby. Traveling salesman, probably. How'd you know his name was George? I asked him, naturally. There's one thing I won't do, it's talk to strange men. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Well, you're looking real well, Emily. Thank you. I always do. Oh, there goes George. Isn't he adorable? Well, don't stand there, wave to George. Goodbye, Georgie. Well, let's push on to the baggage counter, Emily. Lead the way, cousin. Say, there's a dreamboat. Huh? Wasn't he cute? Oh, the men in this town. You know something, cousin? I'm going to like it here. Hmm, what a buzzing cousin. <laughs> Well, here we are, Emily. You have such a charming home, Throckmorton. How's Marjorie? Well, uh, Marjorie's married, you know. Oh, yes. We must compare wedding presents. <laughs> yes. Well, let's go in. I'll get the bags later. Tell me about Leroy. Oh, Leroy's a big boy now. We're great pals. Do a lot of things together. Just a couple of kids, you know. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, step inside, Emily. Leroy's very anxious to meet you. Leroy! Hi! Oh, didn't see you on the floor. Leroy, this is Cousin Emily. Hello, Leroy. Hi. And what a big boy. You're almost as long as the rug. Leroy, get up and say hello to your Cousin Emily. Sorry. Yes, I forgot myself. I was trying to get my airplane motor working. Oh, are you a model airplane fan? Yeah. Leroy, I thought you were going to have this debris picked up. What's wrong with the motor, Leroy? Just won't run. I'll bet Emily can make it run. If there's anything Emily can do, it's make things go. Wait until I kick off my high heels and get down on the floor. Emily! Oh, that feels good. I just love to go barefooted. Yeah? Now, Leroy, you get down here and we'll see what the trouble is. Sure. Emily, do you have to get down on the floor? Oh, Throckmorton, don't be an old fuddy-duddy. Fuddy-duddy? <laughs> Hand me the little wrench, Leroy. Ah, uh, sure. Now, let me see. This shouldn't be harder to fix than a motorcycle. There. Gosh, you know anything about a motorcycle? A little. One summer I rode in a hippodrome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Leroy's been working on that all day, Emily. I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Contact. Contact! Whoop! She fixed it. Monkey. Say, where can we test this thing? Uh, well, uh, Leroy and I were going to the park to fly it. If I hold the wire up short, we can test it right here in the room. Here in the parlor? Stand back, Rock Morton. Hey, look at her go! Whee! Stop, Don! Oh! Darn near scalped me. Ah, oh, it stopped. Thank goodness. I didn't have much gas in it. Come on, Cousin Emily, let's take it to the park. Yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, Emily, you just got in the house. You can't run off just like that. Oh, I can't, can I? I nearly forgot my shoes. I'll let you fly it first, Cousin Emily. Go on, honey. But Leroy... Rock Morton, don't forget to take my bags out of the car. I was worried about Leroy liking her. Well, there they go. And I'm left holding the bag.
Mr. Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Here's a good trick to remember next time you unmold a gelatin salad. Before you turn it onto your serving plate, moisten the surface of that unmolded salad and also moisten the center of the serving plate. Then if the salad unmolds a little off center, you can carefully slide it into position without damaging its shape. That'll help give you a lovely to look at salad. Of course, you want that salad to taste good, too, so be sure you use a delicious salad dressing. Use Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip has a lively, teasing, peppy flavor, one that millions of folks call just exactly right. And it's a flavor no other salad dressing has, because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe that combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. Miracle Whip has a perfect texture, too. It's smooth as satin, because this dressing is blended thoroughly with special craft beaters. So many people like Miracle Whip so much, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created, actually outselling the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it for those shimmering gelatin molds, for colorful vegetable salads, for luscious fruit combinations, and for meat and seafood salads, too. You'll discover there's nothing like smooth, wonderful-tasting Miracle Whip. Well, the great Gildersleeve spent all day trying to reconcile his little family to the arrival of his cousin Emily. She got off the train an hour ago, swept into the house on a wave of personality, won Leroy over, then breezed off to fly his model airplane, leaving the great Gildersleeve all alone. Well, practically all alone. Judge Hooker is sitting across the room, glaring at him. Gildy, I think your giddy cousin was very rude to leave the house. Especially when she knew I was coming to entertain her. Entertain her? Judge, you'd never get a word in. She takes over completely. She knew everybody on the train. You don't mean it. Why, well, we, before we left the depot, some curly-headed fellow went by and Emily yelled, Goodbye, Georgie! No. She even told me to yell goodbye to George. <laughs> My, what an unconventional woman. You won't like her, Horace. You may as well go home. No, I'm going to wait and meet her, if for no other reason than to let her know, gently but firmly... That I am put out. Shh. They're just coming in. It's about time. Gosh, I'm glad you came to see us, Cousin Emily. We've had a lot of fun. Well, we're going roller skating tomorrow. You'd better get to bed. Okay. Co-pilot to pilot. Good night. Pilot to co-pilot. Good night. Pilot to co-pilot. <laughs> hey. Leroy's going right to bed. I usually have to tell him three or four times. He didn't, he didn't even say good night to you, Gilda. Leroy. Good night. Yes, yes. I didn't see you in here, Throckmorton. Well, Judge Hooker and I have been waiting quite a while. Don't tell me this is the judge. Yes, Emily, this is Judge Hooker. The judge, my cousin, Emily Forrester. How do you do? Hello, Judge. Throckmorton, I thought you said the judge was an older man. Well. <laughs> but I suppose some people think you're older because you're prematurely gray. Well, now that you mention it. <laughs> Prematurely gray. He's had snow on the roof for 30 years. Of course, I know you're a judge. You're so distinguished looking. Throckmorton, wouldn't he look cute on the Supreme Court bench? Yeah, cute. Thank you. Are those legal papers you have in your hand? I'll bet your mind is packed so full of habeas corpuses it almost drives you crazy. Well, a judge does have the trying task of making many important decisions. But these papers happen to be my old Chautauqua program. Chautauqua? Judge, don't tell me you were in the theater, too. What a well-rounded man. What a gracious woman to say so. Yes, yes. Since you're from the theater, Miss Forrester... I thought you might like to see my old playbills and uh, perhaps hear me recite. Oh, my goodness. Judge, don't you think you should be going now? I mean, it's getting late and Emily had a long train trip. <laughs> Throckmorton, don't be silly. I never run down. Come on, Judgey. Let's spread your playbills down here on the floor. Let's. I can't wait to see them. Gilday, you have the most captivating cousin. What a changeable old chameleon. <laughs> Well, 
Emily's only been here since last night. She already has the judge and Leroy doing nip-ups. Everybody falls for her bubbly enthusiasm. I don't know where she gets it. We Gillersleeves don't have that kind of personality. Oh, well. I'll eat a big lunch, take a good nap, and forget about Emily. I wonder what's on the menu at Petey's. Hello, Petey. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Well, I might have a bite of lunch, Petey. Very well. I'm surprised you didn't go home to lunch today, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why go home? Well, you have a relative visiting you. It might be the sociable thing to do. Oh, she's out shopping with Marjorie today. Yes, I know. Marjorie and Emily were in this morning. Emily? You mean Miss Forrester, Petey? Well, when she came in, she was Miss Forrester, but by the time she left, she was Emily. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Quite a fetching lady. She has a way of making a man feel at home without caring to be there. Phoebe, <laughs> I'm surprised at you. <laughs> I was surprised at myself. Well, I, you've been taken in just like the judge and Leroy. How's that? Well, she's my cousin, and I hate to say this. But she soft-soaps everybody. She isn't one bit like me. No, she isn't. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one who detects a note of insincerity there. Mr. Gildersleeve, you can't stay in my store and say that about my friend Emily. Your friend? You've only known her since this morning. Well, to know Emily is to like her. On the other hand, I've known you for over 20 years. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me, if she said nice things about you, she was only flattering you. She was not flattering me. What did she say? She said I looked very handsome in my pharmaceutical jacket. Oh, my goodness. And she displayed a keen interest in the way I built a banana split. Oh? She watched me scoop the ice cream out of the can. She watched me peel the bananas. She said I had the hands of an artist. Now, I'll bet you loaded that banana split with so much goo you lost money on it. No, I did not. I didn't even charge you for it. But... <laughs> Oh, brother. Peavy, you're more gullible than I thought. And for your information, you're not handsome. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> now, I've never seen anything like her, Marjorie. She even has Peavy buying sodas for her. She's right upstairs. Oh, yes. Well, you were with her all day. Now, honestly, what do you think about her? Oh, I think she's wonderful. But Marjorie... Emily's one of the nicest persons I've ever known. Oh, you're just like all the others. Evening, Mr. Gillespie. Hello, Bertie. Marjorie and I were just discussing Miss Emily. Yes, sir. You and I feel the same way about visiting relatives. Yes, sir. We do? Anki's <laughs> trying to find somebody who doesn't like her. Well, it isn't that I don't like her. Let's just say I'll be glad when she leaves tonight. All Bertie can say is Bertie hates to see that sweet thing go. What? So do I. Oh, Mr. Gilsey, you should have seen Miss Emily in the kitchen today. Bertie, you mean you let her in your kitchen? Can she ever bake a cake? I'll answer that. She can bake a cake. Oh, it's gorgeous, Auntie. It's devil's food. Yeah, I might have known. Yes, sir. <laughs> That was some cake. That's the first devil food cake ever cooked by an angel. <laughs> what a saleswoman that Emily is. Unky, why don't you go upstairs and ask Emily to stay a while? What? Oh, we think she's quite an addition to the family. You mind if you ask me to do anything within reason? Oh, please, Unky. No, I can't do it. You haven't been very nice to her, you know. Well, she hasn't been very nice to me. You haven't given her a chance. Well, I... Oh, go ahead, Auntie. Tell her we want her to stay. Mm. All right, Marjorie. I'll go up and talk to her. Oh, good for you, Auntie. Now be nice to her. Sure. See you later, my dear. Well, I guess I will have to invite Emily to stay. Still, she do have Hattie's. She'll just have to refuse my invitation. Well, I make it difficult for her to say no. <laughs> I'll just be nice to her and not ask her. Sure. <laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Uh-oh, she's filling Leroy up to the ears again. Now he's calling her Emmy. Tell me the picture, Leroy. I have to pack it. Hey, how about me showing it to Unc? I don't think he wants to see it. 
Throckmorton isn't the least bit interested in what I've done. <laughs> no, sir. Sure he is. He has more important things to think about. He's a prominent man. Perhaps the best known of all the Gilder Cleans. Say, I am at that. <laughs> and I'm Mr. Rolling Stone, who better roll on to Aunt Hattie. Gosh, I hate to see you go. You know something? What? You'll like Uncle a lot better than Aunt Hattie. I do already, Leroy. When you've met as many people as I have, it doesn't take you long to separate the wheat from the chaff. Why, George, that girl knows her oats. <laughs> you should be very proud of your uncle. What a discerning woman. But I guess I'll never get to know him well enough to tell him that. There, I'm all packed. Emily! Oh, Brodmore! Emily, you can't leave. You haven't got to know me well enough. But I thought that you wanted to. Unpack. There must be a lot of things you want to tell me. What a character! <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. A tempting, fancy salad main dish deserves something special in the way of a bread or cracker accompaniment. So try hot cheese-filled rolls, corn sticks, or oven-toasted crackers. That good-looking salad deserves something special in the way of dressing, too. So use Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip is so delicious it makes any salad, elegant or plain, taste better than ever. Try it. See what the lively, teasing flavor of Miracle Whip can do for your salad favorites. See why millions prefer Miracle Whip. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, sir. Emily's a wonderful girl. Cousin to be proud of. Uh, hand me the evening paper, Leroy. Here you are, Uncle. Yeah, there. The paper, magazine, lamp adjusted just right. Why, George, this is solid comfort. Yeah, everything a man needs. Where's Emily? She's up in her room. Lovely girl. Certainly has charm. Yeah, but she hasn't twisted me around her finger the way she has Bertie and Marjorie. Oh, no. That's the reason she likes me. Because I'm firm. Oh, sure. Hello, cousin. Well, Emily, I thought you were up in your room. Oh, I was going to read up there, but I couldn't find the paper. Anyway, I'd rather be down here with you. It's more interesting. You want the paper? Oh, no. You're reading it. I'll find a magazine. Oh, no. Here, here. Take the paper. I can read it tomorrow. <laughs> take the magazines, too. Oh, no. I couldn't. Besides, I don't have a lamp up in my room. You relax, cousin. You've had a hard day. Oh, no. Leroy, grab the magazines and the paper. I'll carry the lamp. Put them up in Cousin Emily's room. What a firm stand. <laughs> Good night, folks. Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Ellis and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Charlotte Lawrence, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What's your favorite kind of sandwich? Cheese? Ham? Chicken? Whichever it is, it'll taste better than ever with Miracle Sandwich Spread. Try it. See what wonderful tang, what a delicious lift Miracle Sandwich Spread gives your sandwich. Miracle Sandwich Spread is made by Kraft from America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, and spicy relishes. For a really thrifty sandwich, use Miracle Sandwich Spread alone between slices of bread. Get a jar tomorrow. Miracle Sandwich Spread.
Tonight, hear the best of Groucho on NBC.